to spend time uh, learning how to create uh, Google Forms. And really there's four steps to uh, creating a, a Google Form. Step one is obviously the creation process. And so when you see this little yellow uh, icon uh, during the course of today's session, this will refer to the first steps of just creating a form. The next step is sharing. One of the great things about Google Forms is that you don't have to, you can create a form with other colleagues. So for example, if Carol and I are working on developing a form, I can share a form with her and we can collaborate on it in real time, working on questions, figuring out the solutions, um, and uh, something that we can work on together. The next step is uh, sending that form to uh, internally into the Blake School or externally into the world. And there's a couple of different ways that can be done, either through email or posting on the web. And then finally, where we'll spend a majority of our time today together is uh, on analysis. What do you do with all this information? Um, and as so uh, we're just going to uh, work very quickly on creating our first form. And so you'll see that there is this little video about creating a new form and adding questions. Uh, it's about a six minute video. Uh, we'll spend even less time doing that um, right now. So uh, hopefully everyone has Google Drive open at this point. And if you don't, this would be the time to go ahead and do so. Google Drive is Google's file server storage uh, service. And within Google Drive, there's a lot of tools that are freely available, like Google Forms. You can create Google Forms from your Google Drive service. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click on the red Create button and go ahead and select Form. Now, it's really important. Um, I, I tell you, this is my personal practice. I actually uh, I write out the questions and most of the answers prior to actually creating my form. And I just think I'm a big believer in just taking the time to think through like, well, what is the data I'm collecting? What kind of questions do I want to ask? Um, getting all of that generative work out of the way. And I only start creating my Google form when I'm really ready for publication. Other people, right from the get-go, will start creating their form. I just find it's easier for me to read either in Microsoft Word or Google Docs uh, to see the, all the questions on one page. And in Google Forms, it can get a little uh, challenging at time, depending on the length. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a dinner invitation today. Uh, as you know, my no, no. So we're going to go ahead and create a dinner invitation uh, to your own home, right? So this is a dinner invitation to uh, to the boxers. So dinner invitation to the That's small woods. Dinner invitation to. <laughs> So to Andersons and so on and so forth. You can choose whatever the few themes that are available. Um, I'm a, a huge fan of our gingerbread, the cookies. <laughs> and once I start my form, the first thing that it'll do is it will give my form a title here at the top. The next thing that I'll do, uh, I can change the title of my form as it'll appear to my users or to the people taking, my recipients. So if I don't want a dinner invitation to the boxers, I can... Uh... David, mm -hmm. um, I have that little thing in the top of mine that has those two check boxes. Mm -hmm. I have require, require the Blake School login to view this form, automatically collect responses to the Blake School username. So uh, we're going to go through each part, and uh, one of the parts that we're going to go through is uh, uh, setting up your form for internal or external users. First thing we're going to do, though, is we're just going to get into creating a very basic form. So I have a title for my form that people will read, a form description. I'm a really big believer of uh, telling your recipients, like, what is this form for? What will the data be used for? Are you collecting personal information? Will others be able to see it? Or is it anonymous? Right now, uh, we're, our intention is I want to know who the person is who's coming. I plan to share this with my spouse as well as a couple of my administrative colleagues. And, and I would want to write that in my form description. So and that's the description, that's the description that they'll see. All right. The next. Uh, the next item I need to do is I need to start choosing the questions I want to add. So the first thing I want to do is I want to find out who the person uh, is who's attending. I'm thinking about sending an automatic uh, email uh, notification to them. So I want to separate things like first name, and I want to change the question type to a text type. And I'm not going to go through all these today, 
Um, you can watch the screencast a little bit later on uh, that will go through each one of these types of questions. So I'm going to create a first name uh, question and I'm going to make sure that I require people to uh, submit that information. And then I'm going to add another item. So this is my adding my next question and I'm going to add another text field, another uh, question. This is last name. And again, I'm going to require this uh, question. Um, I'm really curious to know what uh, I'm planning on serving three different entrees, and so I want to know what people would prefer. So I'm going to add another question. In this case, I'm going to add a multiple choice question. And so, what would you like to eat? This is going to be a required question. Option one, steak, chicken, or veggie. And then most importantly, um, I want to know what day would they prefer to come and attend uh, dinner at my household. So I'm going to add another item. In this case, I'm going to choose from a list. Very similar, multiple choice questions, uh, list questions. It's just how it ends up being displayed. So uh, what night would you prefer to have dinner? And I'm going to make this Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Now I'm going to require this question. And then finally, um, I want to go ahead and uh, create a paragraph text question that allows, it's going to be an optional question, um, any ideas for games or music for dinner? And so it's a free response question um, that folks can answer. I'm not even going to make this a requirement. If people choose to uh, share some ideas for games or music, that's great. If not, not a big deal. Uh, one of the questions earlier uh, in the workshop was particularly how do you create questions that uh, how do you create questions that are, are open ended? So there's two different options for that. One is uh, what we've seen here, right? Text field questions or paragraph text questions. But the other option is in my multiple choice question. Um, the only other option I have for creating a free response is uh, to add other. So I've uh, gone back up to my multiple qu choice question about what you'd like to eat. And you'll notice here on the right hand side, I can add another text field. And that just means that people can put in their own answer, right? They don't want to eat steak, they don't want to eat chicken, they don't want to eat veggie. You might find out what they want to eat. So you have, uh, for multiple choice questions, you can have another field. Uh, otherwise, for all the other questions, you just would need to have uh, a paragraph text question or a text question uh, available. So are there any questions about, um, no pun intended, are there any questions about questions? Okay. So um, I'm getting to the point where I am pleased with the way that my uh, invitation is turning out. I need to think about a couple more things before I publish my uh, form. This is a question that Kathy was asking about earlier. So the, the meat of the form is really the questions that you're asking. But at the top of the form and at the bottom of the form are two important uh, settings that you want to consider. The first one is, do you want to require your recipients of this form to have a Blake School uh, Google Apps account. So any student grade 3 through 12 and any employee, um, for the most part, uh, has a Blake School Google Apps account. And so if I want uh, if I want to ensure that this is only internal, that this would only be an invitation to colleagues at the Blake School, I would want to make sure to re require uh, the Blake School login information. If I plan to invite anyone outside of Blake, my mother, my cousin, um, my best friend, then I want to make sure that I uncheck this. And so this is a really important setting um, when I uncheck this, that if I plan on having this form being filled out by parents, by first graders or second graders, by coaches who uh, wouldn't have a Blake School email address, it's really important that I uncheck this right from the beginning when I create my form. This makes this form, as this little uh, um, designation is pointing out, accessible to outside my domain. So uh, for this first go around, um, I want to make this publicly available. Um, and then finally, if I scroll all the way to the bottom, what is the confirmation um, message that I want uh, my recipients to see? So you'll notice that there's always going to be this generic confirmation response uh, message about your response being recorded. I want to make, I want to personalize this. Thank you for RSVPN. Um, any questions? 
please email David at, and this will turn this uh, into a email hotlink. I have three other options um, before I uh, create my form. Um, the first one is, should I allow recipients to submit another? So if I can think of an example where it might be a shared computer, and I want, uh, or I want them to uh, RSVP for more than one person, I'd leave this checked. If I want uh, anyone who has access to the form to see the results of this form, so for example, in Janet's uh, scenario, she discussed uh, how they were doing a straw ballot. If I wanted uh, the, if I wanted my recipients to see the results instantaneously of the straw ballot, this is where I could go ahead and publish and show a link to this form. Um, and then if I want to allow responders to edit the responses after submitting, in other words, I submit the form, I'm like, oh, you know what, it's not Friday night, I want to go on Saturday night, I would uh, check this box to allow someone to change their answer while they have the browser window open. They can't go back after the fact, but they could change it um, at that moment. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uncheck all these because that those, none of those uh, are my intentions with this form. And I want to start getting a look and feel for what this form feels like. So I'm going to go ahead, scroll back up to the top, and click on View Live Form. And as I start to read through it, everything is looking good. Um, has all the information that I think is really necessary. And now I have two windows open. My Live Form, the one that my recipients will fill out, and in my other browser tab, I have my, uh, my form editor. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close this window. So I'm going to go ahead and close window so I can go back to my form editor. Oops. And the other way, um, I'll just point out uh, briefly, the other way that I can uh, go back into my form editor is, it's not showing up, you'll notice on the upper right hand side, you'll have this uh, little black box in the live form. You can click on this little um, black box and this will take you back into the editing view. So two ways of accomplishing the same task. Okay, so we've gone ahead and we've created our form. We're really happy with it. Um, we have uh, two different ways that we can share our form. The first way uh, to share a form is to send a form to a recipient or a group of recipients. So to start with today, I'm going to go ahead and share the form to the person on my right. So I'm going to uh, click the little blue button up here uh, at the right to send form. You'll notice that in the middle of the send form box, I can send form by email. I can go ahead and start typing the person to my uh, right uh, name. And if it's a member of the Blake School or it's part of my contact list, they will automatically start uh, populating. And then I can go ahead and customize the message so that um, uh, the message says, Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and customize my message. I can change the subject line um, if I so chose. And I'm going to go ahead and click send. Um, and then um, the uh, spreadsheet for the first time will, I'm sorry, the form for the first time will ask me if I want to uh, keep the responses in my form. And we'll talk about this in a little bit. Or if I want to create a new spreadsheet. For now, we're going to keep the responses right in the form. So I'm going to go ahead and click this little button down below. That just means that all the responses that I'm collecting will be attached right now only to this form. We'll get into uh, the other options in a few moments. So keep responses only in form, and automatically an email has been sent off to Hillary. And I'm going to go ahead, you don't need to do this, but I'll just for demonstration's sake, uh, go ahead and show that I received an email from my colleague. Um, and right within my email, within Gmail, I don't even actually need to click on um, this link to fill out the form. I can do it right from here. I can do it. 
No, the pretty version is not here. This is this is the down and dirty version. I just want uh, Hillary to uh, respond. I uh, just wanted to do it right from her email. Uh, this is a colleague at Blake. Uh, I can go ahead and click submit. Um, press OK. And um, I have gotten a thank you for my RSVP. And I can go ahead and delete um, my message. All right. So uh, you'll notice I've returned back into my form editor view. And I have received my first response. Before we start looking at the built-in response tool of uh, Google Forms, are there any questions about creating uh, questions, about school settings or confirmation settings, or sending a form by email? Silence, I will take as a good sign. All right, so um, I'm going to go ahead under the responses menu um, in my form editor. Uh, so I've gone back into my form, and I want to see a summary of all my responses. Now this is Google's. Uh, yes, it's uh, going to be at the top of your form editor. Uh, under there's a responses, and then there's a few responses. No matter which one you click on. Uh, you definitely want to choose uh, responses, and then. Under responses, it drops down. So under the responses tab, uh, everyone can go ahead and choose summary of responses. And this is uh, Google's very basic uh, analytics tool, similar to what you see in SurveyMonkey, but even more basic. So if you really want uh, a tool to create uh, uh, graphs and charts, I would say SurveyMonkey. If you don't want to do that yourself, better tool. But if you just want some really basic information, like for example, I know that one person who responded to my survey, she would like to have steak at dinner. I know that she would like to have uh, she like to have dinner on Friday night, and we're gonna play duck duck goose. You would think that this person might work at our lower school. PG for you. Um, and then finally, uh, the number of daily responses will show me how many folks over the course uh, uh, of time have responded to this form. So right now, only one person, and that's uh, today. All right, so a very, very, very basic analytics tool. Um, it's really helpful for multiple choice questions, helpful for list questions, uh, scale questions, rating, um, uh, rating questions. Not very helpful for paragraph text, because what you'll start to see you can imagine if I invited everyone around this table, uh, this starts to get harder and harder to read. So in a little bit, we're going to take a look at publishing our responses in a Google spreadsheet. And that's where we can start to slice and dice our data a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and choose to edit this form and go back into my editing window. And um, I've decided, you know what, actually it would be really helpful for me to collect the email address of my respondents and uh, their Blake School username. I want to make sure that the person I'm asking to respond to this uh, survey or this form is the person that uh, they say they are. So again, this would be used for internal use only. I don't plan on sending this to my mother, my father, my cousin, or parents. I only plan on sending this to my Blake School colleagues. So I'm going to go ahead and choose to require the Blake School login to view this form, and I'm going to choose to automatically collect respondent's Blake School username. And then I'm going to go ahead and send the form again. But this time, I'm going to go ahead and send it to the person on my left. So I'm going to ask everyone to do that now. Same thing as before. Send form. Customize the message. And I'm going to go ahead and click Send. Again, I'm going to keep my responses only in my forms at this point. OK, so I've received uh, my invitation from Hillary. Um, and just like before, I can go ahead and uh, do this right from within my uh, email. In this, this case, I'm going to go ahead and click on the link. Uh, to uh, access this form in a web browser. So I could see the theme that she chose and see what it would look like as a real form. What you'll notice is uh, that it will tell me that it's collecting my username uh, when I submit this form. And if we had time, I would have suggested to Hillary or I would have done this myself, 
that we should make sure that we put this in our form description, that uh, we're going to collect your Blake username. This form is not anonymous. Uh, I want to know who is responding to this dinner invitation. Uh, so this is a little redundant in the sense that uh, I'm going to go ahead and fill out uh, this checklist. And I'm going to go ahead. And if I wanted to, I can also send a copy of my responses just for my own records. Like, oh, you know what? I should keep this information for posterity's sake because, you know, it's really important for me to know how many veggie entrees I ate at the Smallwood household. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click uh, Submit with Send Me a Copy of the Responses. And she had, you'll notice here that she had required me to fill out this paragraph text uh, question about uh, uh, besides eating. Uh, and it will also tell me here uh, at the top. And so when I finally go ahead and click Submit, uh, she has a personal response. I can see my previous response, so she's allowed me to edit my response, and I can see she's actually allowed me to uh, see the, uh, who's filled out the form. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at uh, back into my own form, and uh, we're going to do one last way of sharing a form. So we talked about how to create a form, how to add questions how to make this so that it's only available to uh, Blake's employees or Blake's students. And now we're going to uh, take a look at how to publish uh, a form or import or how to send information about a form uh, to a colleague, not via email. So uh, when I click send form, so far all we've been doing is send form via email. We're going to go ahead and uh, copy the link to share. So you'll notice when I click in um, this little blue box, it's going to remind me that I need to use the command key and C to copy that link. And let's say, for example, I wanted to publish on the Blake School website. I would go ahead and send this information to Laura, and Laura would take this URL and connect it to a piece of text that I want to have on, on the Blake School website. So I'm going to go ahead and create a brief email to Laura And then I would let Laura know, Laura, and I would paste in my form. Or uh, if I had a, a text that I want to just copy and paste, for example, if I want the invitation uh, link to be uh, highlighted or click here, I could go ahead and highlight my text and use my insert link to go ahead and paste in the text. Now, there's two important things to take note of here. One is um, you'll notice in the URL that it's putting in uh, a slash blakeschool.org. And this is Google's way of knowing that this is a form internally for Blake School employees or students. This is a way that it knows that you are required to have a Blake School email account or Google Apps account in order to fill this out, right? So I had required, Hillary required me to uh, collect my username. This is how Google knows that it's going to collect my username. If uh, I wanted my invitation to be uh, uh, public. I would make sure that I uncheck, so I'll make this accessible outside of my domain, and I go back to uh, view live form, collect the same URL, but the big difference is that I would remove this information. So uh, if you uh, sign up for a generic Google account, uh, this is what a generic Google Form URL will look like. This is a really important uh, trick, uh, seeing people got snagged uh, when they are sending a Google Form to the public uh, that uh, if their son or daughter or, or if they're a Blake School employee or still logged in, Google gets confused. Oh, do you need a Blake School account? So the one way to guarantee that this form is going to be public is to remove this piece of information a slash blakeschool.org slash. And then we'll just take it down to docs.google.com slash forms.
since we've discovered this in uh, Next Community, so like Peter and Hillary Brennan, when you guys if you ever send a link, send you an example link with um, Playnet, then mm -hmm. you have to make sure you use this for parents. Oh, yeah, interesting. Or it will, it will work for them. And for Janet, experience. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> so it's a manual thing that you have to remember. You don't have to do the prepping CP if it's a great question Laura so there's two important steps if I'm making a, a form public the first and the most important by far is that I need to make sure every form that cr it gets created every new form I create will always have this checked by default in other words it will always require Blake's school account to uh, fill this form out so it is absolutely imperative if you want your form to be public to parents, to family, to anyone who doesn't have a Blake School account to uncheck this. It's the first thing you should do when you're planning to create a public form. That, that is a deal breaker if that's checked uh, for anyone who doesn't have a Blake School account. And then the second thing, as Laura is pointing out, that's really important to do is to make sure that I remove this. Uh, yeah. Simply doing that is not enough. Thank you. Yes. Yep. Yep. Simply doing this is not enough. It has to, it will be, in, it's in the settings of Google Form that it needs to be unchecked. Yeah. And it's an easy thing to miss, especially since the default is to collect, to require Blake School account. So well, it's a good thing to sort of slow down and, and take a uh, deeper dive in. Uh, it's so the way that I would test a form um, bef uh, before I go public, right? So right, right now this form is not linked to a uh, Blake School account. I would copy this form. I would open up a web browser that I'm not logged into, especially not one with my Blake School account, and I would test it. And if I can get to this, right? So it's not requiring me to log in. Great. If let me turn it back on. I turn back on to re require the Blake School login. I'm going to, it's the same URL. I'm just going to refresh the page. I've even taken out that a slash blakeschool.org. It will ask me to sign in with a uh, Google I, I account. Actually, I think the answer to your question. Okay. So, what, I'm oh, sorry. Uh, we're going to go ahead then and we're going to take a step away from how to create your own form, how to share it internally and collect usernames or share it externally and collect usernames. And we're going to take a look at collaborating on a form uh, in real time. And then we'll move on to starting to take a look at how to analyze data in a form. All right. And I will say, like, um, I'm happy to host like an August workshop on doing just a deep dive into how you can use sort of all the spreadsheet features. I mean, it's really almost a workshop into itself. We'll, 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 we'll get into, we'll get into sort of, a, we'll, we'll get the feet wet, but um, um, it's really, you know, it, it, it will require some additional professional growth um, to do so. So, all right, we're going to go ahead and collaborate on a form. Um, I've decided that I want the person on my right to help me write this form, um, and I want us to work on this in real time. So uh, just like in Google Docs where you can set it up so that people can edit a document at the same time, you can do the same thing now in Forms. So I'm going to go into the File menu and add collaborators. Hillary and I are going to collaborate on this form in real time. Oh, and can I mention things? Yeah. And work with Hillary? <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, well, she's going to... Uh, she's gonna. She's gonna have you. No, she, you're gonna go ahead and collaborate on the Smallwood form. Uh, Sarah's gonna go ahead and collaborate on the Anderson form. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead, and this should look very familiar if you've shared a doc using Google Docs. Uh, I have my sharing settings. I'm gonna add my folks. So I'm gonna add uh, Hillary. I'm gonna notify her via email. Hillary. And I'm sure she gets this a lot. Help. <laughs> And I'm going to go ahead and click uh, share and save. And now I can see that um, the uh, now we have two editors on this document, me the owner, meaning I can delete this form, I can make editing changes, or Hillary, she can edit the form, make changes, but she can't delete this form. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click done. 
And I'm going to wait for my colleague on my left, Jenea, to add me as a collaborator. And so for a moment, I'm going to ask everyone to just take a look up here. I'm going to show you what this looks like. Um, you'll see uh, what's happened, just like in Google Docs, is the first thing that happens is it shows me who is on my Google document, or in this case, my Google form. Uh, so it shows the first uh, uh, initial of the first name. So Hillary Smallwood, if I hover over, it shows me uh, Hillary's name. And um, I am the person in blue. This is where I'm working. Uh, Hillary, do you want to? choose the next question. Oh, so there she is. She's in pink, so it corresponds to her name. Hillary and I are working on this form at the same time. I could say to Hillary, you know what, we need a question about uh, games to play. Can you add a question on uh, two choices for games, Duck, Duck, Goose, and uh, Connect Four. Ray Duck. <laughs> True Minnesotan game. And so you can see down here, um, there she is. She's working on the question. She's added the item. Uh, she's now typing in um, the first question. She's changing the question type. And there it is. She's made it uh, a multiple choice question. We've seen her made it a multiple choice question in real time. She's given the first option around duck, duck, goose, the second option. And uh, I realize she's forgotten the most important one. So I'm going to uh, work okay. on this with her in real time. I'm editing That's the awesome. question. And Gray Duck, our Minnesota version, and yeah, click Duck. Yeah, I got nothing on that. Uh, so you can see that we can work on this in real time. And just like in Google Docs, I can go ahead and uh, I can uh, add questions, change questions. And we can be working on this back and forth until we're both satisfied. And uh, Hillary says, yep, I'm happy with it. Why don't you go ahead and publish it? So very briefly, you can collaborate on a document uh, form in real time or asynchronously, um, just like you would a Google form. OK? All right. So um, why don't you go ahead and do so with uh, the person uh, on your uh, so Hillary's going to collaborate with Brenda, and Brenda's going to collaborate with Sarah, the person on your right. Uh, work on your document. So I've been working on this with Hillary. She's the person on my right. Jenea has shared me uh, her document. There she is. Um, and I can work with her. So just take a moment just to uh, work on a document together. Uh, yes, you can chat. So, uh, no, next to your uh, initial of the person in there, if you click on that little chat box, I can say, hey, Hillary. Mm -hmm. So can you add a question? Yes. I forgot a question, so you want to add it? Show me how you do yeah. Thank you. 
So, it more likely has to do with uh, your browser being updated than it does with Google Chrome. Okay, I'm not so. sure. I'm doing so. I want to take that type of browser and I can. I mean, this is the way we are. Every time I try to push the semi-tick over here, I guess it's more likely that you're. I know. That's the one downside of uh, applications that run over the web. Frequently <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, updated web browsers. Uh, yours. So now if you go down, you can see changes that Jania has made. She hasn't shared. She hasn't added oh, me yet. That's why I told her to go to file and add me. Oh, OK. So yeah, go um, on here. Go to, go to um, go to file. No, cancel out of that. Cancel out of that. You can go to the file menu yeah. and um, add collaborator. Can't you do it at the bottom? Yeah, I thought I did. I did. I thought you had to do No, no, I had done that. But there's, I go down. You can do it in the down at the bottom. Oh, actually, you should probably do it. And then, what do I need? Do I need to come Okay, so I've turned, uh, I should have never answered that question. I can see that I've turned everyone. You can imagine what this looks like in the classroom, right? The rule of thumb that I have is uh, that I should be able to see your chats at, at all time. Just, just as you have a back channel conversation. <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, I'm going to ask everyone to go ahead and uh, stop where they are. Uh, I'm going to show one feature um, in the new version of Google Forms that I think is fantastic. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and go back to uh, the website. <laughs> Oops, that's not it. Um, I should have. All right, so we've gone ahead and we've done this first part of uh, looking at what uh, Google Forms is, um, planning uh, our forms. Uh, my new favorite feature, especially if you have uh, uh, old forms that you have lying around and you want to add a long list of items, is the new copy and paste feature. Um, so. And it could be they'd be able to contribute. You have this list of the supplies you need here, and while you could retype each of these items, it's easier just to copy the entire list and then paste it right into your question. So if, if you're like me and you write all uh, your questions in Word, you can just copy and paste rather than cop copying and pasting an entire list for multiple choice or list questions instead of having to do one by one by one. <laughs> if you use the old version of Google Forms, then you know what a nice feature that is. Especially if you use teachers as a drop-in. Yes! <laughs> you what? Use teachers in the chat, you know, like pick a teacher. Oh, and sure. And have to list them all. Oh, yeah. So that works in that mm -hmm. scenario? Oh, yeah. List? Oh, absolutely. It's great. If you have a lot, a large set of data that you don't want to have to copy and paste back and forth, to copy and paste a list feature, fantastic. When we first did that one form, though, with teachers, right, with our parent-teacher conferences, that, that was the old form. That was the old version. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. So hence why uh, it's a <laughs> much <No fun>. better. <laughs> it was. Janet, did you use forms to schedule parent-teacher conferences? No. It was slick. Let's Thanks to David. So um, we're going to go ahead. We've taken a look at how to create. We've taken a look at how to share and collaborate in real time. We've taken a look at how to publish and the importance of publishing internally versus externally. Um, we're going to go ahead and start taking a look at the last part of this, which is around uh, analyzing the data that we're collecting. Now, I will say that this is where we start moving away from Google Forms as a tool unto itself and all that form data going into a spreadsheet. Um, um, and all the things that we can do in a regular spreadsheet tool like Microsoft Excel or Apple Numbers or Google Spreadsheets, that's where the power of this really comes into play. So uh, if you have your, uh, your, your invitation open, 
let's go ahead and um, we are going to choose a response destination. So uh, what do I mean by choose a response destination? Go ahead and click on that. You'll notice uh, that this is a one-way broadcast. So what this is showing, this little pictograph is showing, is that for now, we've been uh, keeping all of our responses in our form. In a moment, we're going to choose to start publishing all of our responses into a spreadsheet. So we can modify and rearrange our form, and all the, all the responses we're going to collect is going to go to a separate spreadsheet. So this is conceptually, we're taking all the data out of the forms, and we're publishing it into a Google spreadsheet. So instead of keeping responses only in forms, we're going to go ahead and choose a new spreadsheet. So I'll just do that again real quickly. Yeah, where were you? So if you look here at the top in the form editor. I don't have that. I don't either. That's where I can go. Go to your actual completed form. And if you see view responses that need We want the live form? You've already, if you've already, if you have the live response, go ahead and click on response. Oh, okay. He's saying go back to response. Go back. I don't keep this. Okay. You're good. Right. Yeah, you're responses. Your Got it. David? Yep. If we select um, to put the responses in the spreadsheet, is that in addition to having them in the form? It will continue to collect them in the form, but it will uh, start publishing them now into one way into a spreadsheet. So you can't make changes in your spreadsheet and publish them back, or you can't make changes in your spreadsheet, change them in the form. So let's take a look at this. Um, so if you've already, if you've already, uh, if you've already clicked choose response destination or accidentally clicked uh, create a new spreadsheet, this was now going to start to say view responses. But since I'm doing this for the first time, I'm going to go ahead and choose to put this in a new spreadsheet. And you'll see that every time um, I'm putting this in a spreadsheet, it's going to append it with in parentheses responses. So whatever the title of the form is and in parentheses responses. Which I'm noticing is very helpful when you're on your drive. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And so I'm going to go ahead and click uh, Create. Give it a second. You'll see that it's setting up the spreadsheet. And you'll notice it's going to, um, it's going to change that button from change, or I'm sorry, to choose your response to view responses. Right? So if you've already done it, you're good. So I only have um, one response. When I click on view responses, it's going to open up another browser window and show the spreadsheet view. So it'll show me the timestamp that uh, when Hillary submitted her responses, um, what she wanted to do, uh, what ideas she had for playing games, um, and then as more and more people submit, this will automatically start to uh, uh, add responses, right? But you can imagine you have 150 different responses. This spreadsheet starts to become a bit of an albatross. So how do you start slicing and dicing um, the data? Um, Let's see how best to do this. Let me think for one moment. Hey, David? Yeah. I'm sorry, I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. I see that Tracy, when you went in and did the good job of your responses in there, I, I don't have any responses to the one on that page. Uh, that's unusual. I have to take a look. <laughs> Say that again, Jesus. If you at first chose to create a few responses in the form and then go back and click the create a separate spreadsheet, so you can transfer, go back so to the form. Exactly. You can change. You can point the responses, new res new new responses, additional responses to a new spreadsheet, but it won't copy the old responses. If that's your question, right? Yeah, it won't do that. So uh, you. It's linked. The minute it's linked. You, you send it, it. It's linked, and then if you change anything on either side, you need to. It will stay linked. It'll continue. Even if you change things in the spreadsheets, it won't change things in the right. form. But uh, it is linked. And if you want to add items oh, to your sure. form, I added questions, so they are showing up in the spreadsheet. Okay. Yeah, they'll start. Your spreadsheet will just increase its but number of columns. The spreadsheet doesn't push it back to the form. The form always pushes it to the 
That's right. It's a one directional scenario, forms to spreadsheets. So if you give me one moment, I'm going to share out uh, the set of data that I think will make this a little bit more helpful to look at. And I'm going to ask everyone to uh, copy this. So just give me a moment. I'll just everyone ask, uh, stand by. So um, from here on out, we can start to work with this data in the same way that we'd work with any data uh, in, uh, in, in, a, in a spreadsheet. Uh, so we can start to filter and sort the data. We can apply conditional formatting. We can use formulas to create averages. Anything that you can think of that you do in a spreadsheet, um, you can do for the most part in Google Spreadsheets. Uh, you can protect information. You can create named ranges. What we're going to try to accomplish today is to apply some conditional formatting. We're going to look at filtering and sorting. And then finally, we're going to take a look at how to create a pivot, pivot table. So those are the three things that we're going to try to accomplish uh, today. Um, and then uh, look towards hosting a workshop in August that we just concentrate on Google Spreadsheets. Now that you have Google Forms sort of under your belt, uh, we can look at um, doing more work in Google Spreadsheets. So uh, first things first, uh, I want to go ahead and start creating some conditional formatting. So I want to apply, I want the uh, responses to automatically start color coding based on the responses. So for example, I have let me go ahead and just so you can see this form. Let me go to the live form. I've created this form that asks some of the similar questions that we've been doing so far, including, for example, that this invitation is too long in a scale question. Do you strongly agree or strong, strongly disagree or strongly agree? And I want to start looking at, well, how many people think this invitation is, is too long? So to create a conditional formatting, um, there's lots of different ways of starting it off, but I'm going to start by hovering over my column. So column G, this invite is too long. I'm going to take my cursor over to that little right-hand corner, and I'm going to apply conditional formatting. Has anyone ever used conditional formatting in spreadsheets before? Amazing. Um, all right, so uh, it gives us basically conditional formatting is it's asking you to take define a rule and tell it um, how to either change the text color or change the background color. So it, keep in mind that this uh, particular question is looking at a rating scale. I want to find all the people who think that this question, uh, this survey is too long. So everyone who's four and above, right, who answered four or fives, I want to know who those people are. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say that in this case, uh, everything that's greater than the number four, so these are people who strong, agree or strongly agree that this is a long form, I want to change the background color to this uh, light pink color. And so everything in column G from here on out is going to automatically change colors if it's number four or five. And I'm going to go ahead and click save rules. You're right. You, yeah, you're absolutely right. So greater than three. Thank you. <coughs> Um, so any so the next response that I could get, so let me go ahead and just uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put in the number four. And submit this. And when I submit this, uh, it will automatically put in a, the new response. There is my time date stamp. Uh, and you'll notice that it automatically changes the response to pink, right? So um, I, I have to say conditional formatting is great if you just want to quickly visualize uh, some information without having to filter or sort. So when I sort of get a, a gestalt, past the gestalt, we're going to want to move to uh, sorting and filtering, right? So we want to start to slice and dice our data. Um, are there any questions about conditional formatting? And uh, as I said, everything that we're doing here today uh, is going to be uh, uh, located here. So when we talk about conditional formatting, there's a little screencast about how to apply conditional formatting. All right, so this is great. I now know uh, who thinks this form is too long. Bobby and David think this form is too long. I want to start figuring out how many people are coming to, uh, who want to come to dinner on Friday night. So I want to sort and filter um, my data uh, to find out who's coming on Friday. The upper left hand corner of a spreadsheet, you'll have that little gray box. Uh, this will allow me to select all the data in the uh, spreadsheet. 
And now when I turn on my uh, filter, thank you, Hillary, uh, you'll notice that I have all of these little drop-down tabs uh, above my columns. And so now when I click this drop-down tab, I can sort and filter the data, you know, from smallest to greatest or from letter A to Z, or I can uh, sort my data or I can filter my data. So for example, if I just want to see who's coming to Friday, I would clear all of the responses and just check Friday. And I'll go from uh, six responses to three responses. So a quick way of slicing your data to say, oh, I see I have about three people who are coming to Friday night. That seems like uh, uh, the most folks. And if I ever decide, you know what, I need to see all the data again, I just go ahead and toggle that filter switch off and it will turn all of my uh, data, uh, it will turn all my data back to its original form. I know, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. All right, so uh, we've looked at uh, filtering, we've taken a look at conditional formatting. Uh, last thing we'll take a quick look at is uh, sorting information. So again, I've highlighted all of my data. I've turned on the sort and filter tool. I'm going to go ahead and uh, sort my data so that it is from, and let's see, I'm going to do that on my invitation is too long, I'm going to sort it uh, from smallest to greatest. And so I can see that uh, for the most part, uh, people don't think this invitation is too long. A few people uh, think this uh, invitation uh, uh, is, is too long. And if I go ahead and turn off sort and filter, uh, it will keep whatever the last way I've sorted the data, it will keep it uh, that way. Uh, so let me try doing this another way. I'm going to go ahead and highlight all my data, sort and filter, and I'm going to sort and filter by the timestamp. So I want to go from oldest to newest, right? So this is the way that normally form data will come in, right? So anytime I sort data, it will keep the sort. If I want to resort it, I need to resort it based on the way that it was originally uh, set up. So every Google form will be based on its timestamp. So sorting, filtering, conditional formatting. And now we're going to take a look at creating a pivot table. And instead of selecting all of the data, I'm going to go um, and I'm going to highlight columns A through, let's just go ahead, columns A through L. These are all the questions in my form. This is all the data. I finished collecting all of the data. I'm going to highlight the columns in my form responses. And I'm going to highlight them across from A to L. I'm going to go into the data menu, same as before, click, create the pivot table report, and you'll notice that the range now is different. It's showing, instead of showing the rows, it's showing the columns. Um, so I want to make sure that everyone has success in doing so before we move on. Looking good. All right, so now um, with the right range, I can go ahead and start adding rows, uh, first name, last name, and uh, let's say, what is the entree? And then finally, uh, what night um, do you prefer? So you'll notice here on the uh, right-hand side, I've added first name, last name, entree, and the night. Pivot tables are really meant for uh, looking, calculating uh, financial information. So by default, it will show totals. I'm just going to go ahead and unselect show totals. And so uh, what it's doing now is it's showing me out of my six responses, uh, I've asked it to uh, show me information about the first name, the last name, the entree, and the day. Okay. All right, so be mindful of time. Um, so I have my six responses. It's showing me all the responses in my data right now because I haven't filtered any of my information, right? So if I want to find out uh, that, I want to find out who's coming to my Friday night dinner, um, I need to filter the information. So if I scroll down on my report editor a little bit further, 
uh, I can choose to filter the data. So I'm going to add a field, and I'm going to choose to filter on um, what night would you prefer to have dinner. So conceptually, this is exactly like uh, the filter tool that we were looking at just a little while ago. Right? So I'm filtering. I'm choosing to filter. Instead of uh, all items, I'm going to clear it. I'm going to choose to filter just for Friday night responses. And now my, uh, my responses go from 6 to 3. But you're just creating a whole other tab of it where it would be you don't you have it there forever. Yes, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, so the whole point of this is if I'm going to have lots of information and people are going to continue to add to it, this will automatically change over time. So watch, you'll see that Bobby, for example, um, Bobby Olson uh, is coming to dinner on Friday and wants to eat steak. I'm going to go back into my original data, I'm just, uh, and I'm going to change this from Friday to Sunday. And my pivot table automatically will now filter her out, and now I only have my Friday responses. You want to, you have, it'll just do it automatically. You don't have to update it. Yes. So you'll notice here at the bottom that update table on each change. Every time the original data set changes, oh, it'll automatically uh, change. Rochelle. So, can you tell me then why I wouldn't want to like view my live form? Right. Why wouldn't you just? Why wouldn't I just stay in my form responses? Why would I even bother? I mean, like, because what is it is under view? What is it? The new, um, oh, the summary responses. The where you show it, uh, view pie chart, I think. No, view um, list. Yeah, so you can, there's all sorts of different ways of doing it. The advantage here is if you have expect to continually to have a large set of data. So now, for example, instead of having to go through and create new lists or to create. Um, uh, so so filter and save. It. I can go ahead now and say this is my template. I want to see all of my responses as they come in for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So instead of doing this whole pivot table report again, I'm going to go under the uh, worksheet and I'm going to go to duplicate. I'm going to. I've just duplicated the exact same pivot table report. I'm going to rename it, um, and I'm going to filter by Saturday. And now instead of filtering by Friday, I'm going to filter by Saturday. And, it, and, it, yeah. yep. and as, as data comes in in real time, it will show me Not those responses in, in real time. Oh, because we're doing this right. Okay, okay, great. And then it automatically populates. Exactly, automatically populates. Yep. Um, so this is helpful just to, and then of course you can do a, uh, you can use the values field to do a count so you can see, okay, I have 50 people coming for Saturday, I have 40 people coming for uh, Friday, and it's just a, a good way of seeing how you want to filter the data. That's really what pivot tables reports. The whole idea is that you have a table of information and it's pivoting that information into a report automatically in real time as that information changes. Yeah, so let's say, for example, that there's information that I think is really important, such as um, uh, Joe Smith has, you know, that people have confirmed that they're coming. It's not that they've only expressed their interest, but they've confirmed. So I can go ahead in my uh, form responses, and I can change my spreadsheet to however I want. And I can go ahead and say yes, or no, or uh, TBD. And in my pivot table, um, I can continue to pivot that additional information. So I can go ahead and add a row on, uh, and we need yeah. I guess I should just something more specifically. If, if I want to hire someone to help me with my accounting, I'm going to have to add a row for Yeah, you could use a pivot table just to, absolutely. So the other way, pivot tables can be really helpful. You can have a big form and then pivot the information down to what you really want to see. But I can add data specifically to the pivot table if 
directly to the system? No. A pivot table is just a report. It's like a query in a database. It's just showing, but she could do it to her form responses, right? So that's, yeah, a pivot table is just a way, it's like uh, sorting and filtering. That's, okay. So I want to be mindful of time. It's three o'clock. Um, we uh, were able to look at, briefly at pivot tables. Um, I have put uh, some additional information about how to do pivot tables uh, on the website. We didn't get into this last part around um, doing things like list views or by uh, doing things like mail merges or using Google scripts. Um, but that is information, that is things that you, we can do. And um, if you are all interested, we can look at doing this again in early August when most folks are going to be back, especially as folks have gotten a chance to really develop some level of comfort with uh, forms and we can have a whole workshop devoted specifically to spreadsheets because forms is a way to collect information spreadsheets is a way to really analyze um, and uh, do mail merges and uh, to create Google Docs and so it depends on what your challenge is but that's where you start to flex some of the muscle out of Google Forms